How to solder EC5 connectors. Well, that is the subject of today's video, guys. I'm gonna show you step-by-step step exactly how easy these are to solder on. But there is a right way and a wrong way to do it. And one key thing that you need to learn about these before you go near them with the soldering iron. Why am I doing this? A lot of the cars that I've got in at the minute taking the EC5 connectors. So while I've got a few batteries that have them, mainly my 4S ones, I've also got a large amount of 3S batteries and even some of my 4S ones that have got Dean's connectors on there. And a few of you guys have said, Rich, using the adapters, you may be throttling the power delivery from the batteries and maybe cars aren't going quite as fast as they cut as they should be because they may be putting a little bit of resistance in the battery lead. So it's time to get rid of all these Dean's ones and fit EC5 connectors. So let's see just how we do it. The first thing I should say when soldering EC5 connectors is how they're different from other connectors. In these Dean's connectors and the XT90 connectors, these are made of high temperature plastic, so the pins are already in the XT90 connector and the Dean's connector. This is low temperature plastic, guys. If you put this soldering iron against it with the pins already in there, you're just going to melt the thing. So you need to solder the pins on before you go about fixing this on. And there is one of the EC5 adapter leads, which I have been using, guys. Just having that, for that one to hand. So we'll do this battery first of all. Putting that to one side. One thing to be aware of at this point is this LiPo battery is still gonna have some charge in here. So while I can cut the ends of the leads off and strip them back, once they're stripped back, I need to put some tape around at least one of them to stop them shorting out on each other or anything else like this metal worktop here. Whoa! Richie, whoa moment on here guys. Before I go cutting that lead off, we need to make ex sure exactly which connector we're fitting on here. You will know it's the one, it's the female ones or the ones with the holes in here. So we don't want these pins. That's because that's going on the other half of our connector. So what we want, we don't want to fit the matching half on there. We want the half that doesn't match, which is exactly the same as this one. So this is the one we're going to use. I'm going to put that one way out the way. Remove that connector. When you cut through the lead, do them one at a time. So for safety, doing them one at a time. So I've trimmed the lead there. What's the first thing I'm gonna do? Before I go and cut the other lead, I'm gonna tin this one, put a bit of tape around this, and then cut that one off. So to say, first of all, I'm gonna tin this positive lead. So I've been pre-tinned that wire, I'm gonna leave it to cool down, then tape it up. While that's cooling down, let's take a look at the EC5 connector itself. While it's marked positive on here, negative on this side, key indicator is normally the side with the square edge, like an XT90 connector, is the positive side on there. So you think square edge, positive side. Just remember guys, if you like what you see today, don't forget to subscribe. So we're taping that up, making sure that's nice and secure. Not everyone's gonna have a metal work surface like I have, but the same thing, if you've got both leads exposed at the same time, they touch each other, the battery is going to short out, which is not going to be good. So now for the second lead. Now my next step is to strip the end of the negative wire and tin that lead. Okay, that's my second lead ready. Leave that to cool down, then onto the EC5 connector. While I'm waiting for the lead to cool down, just to double check here, we've got the female connectors on here and the female connector to go on the leads. This EC5 connector is gonna slide on over the top of the leads, so we need to pay attention to polarity, make sure we get the red wire through this one, and only then are we gonna solder on the pins to the EC5 connector. Under no circumstances do you wanna push these pins into this connector and try and solder them on, because you will melt this thing. Sliding them on, ensuring that square side is with the positive connector. I'm going to do one pin at a time. Now for speed, I've already tinned this part of the EC5 connector the other day in preparation for doing this video. Now, the key bit, guys, where you can go very, very wrong on this connector, the lead is going to want to go straight down and in. Not at an angle that way, not tilted towards me, not away from me, that way, straight down and in. The reason for that will become obvious in a second. It's gone clear, got the smoke just coming off of it. So I'm gonna push my lead straight down and in. Now I'm gonna hold that there because when I first did this earlier, trialing it before showing it to you people, the thing was still too warm and the lead bent to one side as it hadn't cooled enough. Few little wire hairs 
to trim, but there you can see the EC5 connector pin pretty much straight on to the cable. Now for the tricky bit, the second wire. We want to push this one in first of all, because I want to take the tape off of here. Don't want them touching together, do we now? At this point, we're going to use a hex driver to push the pin partially into the connector, but wait until it has cooled down. Bear in mind, when this is still hot to the touch like that, that is hot enough to melt this blue plastic. So we're gonna leave that to cool for a minute or so. Taking a hex driver, very gently, I'm gonna push that down as far as it goes. That last little bit, we're gonna have to use a little bit of extra pressure on that, but more on that in a second. Next, we're gonna do this cable. We're gonna tin this lead, just like we did with the negative one. With our lead all tinned, ready to do the other connector. And I've pre-tinned this one as well. And again, we want to be straight down with the lead, keeping the lead as straight as possible on that. Just blow on the lead gently to cool it. A little bit of solder to clean off of there. Well, with our second lead done, we're ready to do exactly the same. Use the hex driver and push the connector down so that they're both to this kind of height. But once again, leave that one to cool down. Now I mentioned the importance of keeping the wires as straight as possible when soldering them into the connectors. That's because otherwise, if they're at an angle, you won't be able to push them back into the connector. Okay, pushing that one back in there. Gonna fight me a bit. Now the EC5 connector is ready to be put in the vise and those pins tapped home. Now I've got it very loosely in the vise so those wires can still move up and down. Just going to tap this pin down very gently. So that's moving the wire back. There, and it's gone. Whatever you do, don't be tempted to do as I initially did, learn from my mistakes. Have both pins out here, guys. Touch them against the metal vise. How dumb was that, Richie? So what do you think you could squeeze them both in at the same time on there? This seems to be the preferred way. As I say, you don't want that too tight. You don't want it clamping the wire because you want the pin, you want the wire at the back of the pin to move down. Too far on that one. Use the screwdriver to push the red pin back down so that both are level on there. So that is how you solder an EC5 connector. Do learn from my mistakes, guys. As I say, do not attempt to push the two pins in together with anything metal like the vice, like yours truly did to start with. However, the proof is in the eating of the pudding, as we say. And uh, there we are. We've immediately got power in my armor granite. Anyway, I hope you found that how to solder an EC5 connector video useful. Now yours truly only has about another dozen of these to redo tonight. Well, thumbs up if you like this video guys, post any comments you might have in the comment section below the video and hit the circle below to subscribe. And if you do hit the circle, don't forget to hit the bell.